Hey, welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use math and functions in Axure in a little bit more in depth way. So if you remember from my previous videos, there were a lot of instances where we would calculate some numbers. You might want to create a shopping basket. You might want to create some or prices of products. You might want to add some sort of details. You might want to calculate, let's say, how many numbers a thing has or let's say you want to randomize numbers or let's say you want to you know just use math in, to its fullest extent and it's just the basics but you basically once you get this you can apply it to any instance in your prototypes especially if you want to have like a scientific precision in how your users interact with certain things and then replay the values back to them so i have this simple equation in my prototype as you can see it's just to show you exactly what we're gonna be doing so i'm gonna allow users to input two values and then perhaps select from a drop down one of the functions which are built in an actual of course you can add more functions if you want to but just for this demo i'm just gonna show you the basics and then we're gonna have also the result number or some sort of thing which we can you know showcase to the user so then you can take these principles and apply them to your prototypes when you need to calculate something i think it's as simple as that so let's go ahead and i'm gonna recreate the same structure in a bit more clear way so i'm just gonna copy the last bit and just give it a name because we can just replace that value to let's say result and I'm gonna also copy that probably, or just you can drag it in. And then I'm gonna have two different input fields for each of the numbers. And you can think that we're basically creating simple calculator app or something like that, you know? Something along those lines. Uh, so let's make the text a bit bigger, like so, that's pretty good. And I'm gonna add a little bit of radius without spending too much time and let me just reuse the assets from the, the other one just so we have some sort of resemblance and, and guidance for the users let's say or yourself number two and this i'm just gonna transform into a drop down so let's say let's take a drop list element for the sake let's select one so let's edit many and say add uh, deduct multiply and let's say divide once that's set up we can go ahead and maybe by default have add just gonna go ahead and just maybe replace the color of this one to something else and that's it now we named it already the result and I'm gonna name the text field from our text items. So this is gonna be N2, and this is gonna be N1. By default, we can keep O0, um, or you, you can just, you know, have nothing in it, but it's up to you. And now for preview, as usual, you're gonna see that nothing is really functional. So it doesn't matter if I t say it's free, this is 12, result is still zero or like nothing at all. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and start adding functions. So now as we set up these three fields, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add some condition uh, and then run some functions. So conditions I would attach first and foremost to our dropdown. So let's say every time we change it, we can run you know, the calculations. So I'm gonna select on selection change and we are gonna say set text and result. And here we're gonna click on functions and say something like number one plus number two, update that to the result. But I want to introduce you first and foremost to local variables. And local variables is kind of like a global variables I showed you in the previous videos, but this is like a temporary placeholder which you can calculate on the go and it doesn't basically get stored across the pages. It's just on this page. So it's really nifty type of thing. So I'm going to say, let's say N1 text on a widget N1. So basically whatever is that in that number, every time we run this feature, it's just going to grab it and going to place in a calculation without massive storage. And let's say N2 
is going to be our number two. And then we can create an equation, which is basically n1 plus n2 and click OK. And that's it. Now, every time we update it, it's just going to add zero plus zero. Let me show exactly what I mean. So let's say if I select something, zero plus zero is zero. If like some, it runs again and again and again. And that is because we don't really check exactly what's the value inside the drop down. Now that's where it's going to get interesting. So we can define this as on a simple terms, but now we need to add conditional statements because we're saying if it additions, change that result to adding one number to another number. So I'm going to click on if and case one, we can say add, we're going to add logic and say, if selection of this equals option add, you know, actually automatically prefills, run these statements. And then we can copy as well and just toggle to if another if and edit another case and say deduct for example selection of this equals deduct we're gonna edit that statement and just say minus instead of plus and you can see I can edit the function instead of going inside the window simple as that and lastly I'm gonna also do the same for let's say multiply Remember to keep the condition names different from case to case and switch to if is because actually might get confused which case to run when. So it's always a good practice to just do it. So and I'm going to multiply it, which is a star sign, as you know. And lastly, I'm going to deduct. So I'm just going to oops, I'm just going to go back change the value in the condition, uh, sorry, divide, not deduct. And let me just change the value here, divide. And we're going to divide number one from number two, like so. So we defined every single case on the change. And now we can actually preview and see what happens to the result. Boom. As you can see, it's zero by default, deduction and so forth. And if we update those values to one and seven, let's say, and add, deduct, multiply, divide, and it calculates. Now, the bit here, which is confusing, as you see from the demo, is that if I change this to eight and divide still stands, the value is not updated. Now, I'm going to show you really quickly how to solve this. As you can see, we already had conditional statements on a change to this, but not to this. So all we have to really do is add a new interaction uh, on text change like so and do so for both of them. But what we can do is just copy the same exact statements one by one and just paste it in that new interaction on text change. Now, every time we change the text, we change the drop down, we change any number, boom, it's going to run the same sequence. I'm going to do for both. So I'm going to do it for number two as well, like so. And now we can preview it again. As you can see, by, defin by default, we have zero. If we add one, it's one. If we add two, it's two. We can add four here and it's automatically six. We can multiply it. We can divide it. We can deduct it. We can say something along the lines of that, adding, as you can see, we always calculating it on the go. Boom, everything is calculated and everything is working as it's meant to. So this is how you do calculations at a basic level. If you don't need to pass a value across the pages, I would suggest using local variables instead of global ones and also trying to experiment what you can do with the functions in Axure because it's quite a lot of things really. You know, it's it's really simple statement what we are working on here. But as you can see, as long as you define what you want to calculate and what's the method, it just does it for you. So that's the flexibility of, uh, you know, high fidelity prototyping tools like Axure because Almost no tools in the market apart from HTML and JavaScript where you want to code would allow you to do this. And this is so easy to do that anyone within 10 minutes can pick up and do so. 
So if your prototypes require high fidelity, go ahead and try to experiment in functions, local variables and numbers and maths in Axure. And if it was useful, give a like, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below. And as usual, I'll see you next time.